Welcome to the third episode already of our EVM expeditions. This is a series where we kind of dive into different topics of the EVM. So anything related to Ethereum, uh, various tools, sidechains, mechanisms. And uh, today we're going to be looking into subgraph development, specifically an intro and how to get started there. Setting up your first uh, subgraph locally to get uh, the gist of it. Subgraphs are very popular in the Web3 space due to the graph hosting them and having a, a whole network to run these. And yeah, I think without further ado, I would say Felix, go for it. Yeah, welcome to uh, setting up a local subgraph environment. Um, yeah, I'm going to jump right into it. So, so basically, um, over the last uh, two weeks, I tried to, to set up um, the local, uh, a local subgraph environment to, to be able to test subgraphs locally, obviously. Um, um, I tried to include um, Foundry's Anvil as a local um, chain and um, experimented a bit with how to set up um, a basic subgraph. Um, yeah, how to to uh, push the uh, um, push an example contract um, to Anvil and stuff like that, and obviously uh, include the the graph node into it. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, so for setting up the the local environment, there are some prerequisites that we need to include or that you have to have on your PC. The first one would be um, uh, the node package manager, um, Foundry, um, Docker is, uh, I use Docker for the, for the up, um, setting up the, the graph node and we need the graph CLI. That, that one is used for um, code creation of the subgraph later down the line. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna uh, follow the, the readme file. I structured all of my, like uh, how you, you can set up um, the system for yourself. Um, yeah. So first things first, let's uh, set up the, uh, um, the node packages in the basic subgraph folder. Probably easy enough. npm install. Nice. After you sudo. have to go into the right folder. All right, let's go. Yes, did it. Um, okay, next step would be setting up the Anvil chain. Um, and this basically represents our uh, local chain. Um, it, it comes from uh, <clears throat> um, the Anvil is basically in extension from from foundry that allows you to create a local chain on your on your pc um, we're using here um, uh, host 0 0.0.0 uh, to basically um, create like uh, it it's the access point for the for the chain in this case while we're using 0 .0 .0 .0, um, I don't actually know. Um, I talked about it uh, briefly with Marvin. For some reason, um, the, the graph node accepts this address and searches for it automatically with a, with a script to create a connection between the two. Um, so the, the address we get later down the line will be something along the lines of uh, 172 point something something. Um, and against all reason, we can still connect to it via the local host. Don't ask me why, that was one of the main points where I got stuck along the lines. Um, yeah, so we, we set up the, the, um, the local chain and now we're gonna push an example contract. The example contract um, is pretty basic. Um, it's just a data mapping. Uh, we basically 
<clears throat> have a function that that uh, adds data to the uh, um, to the mapping here, and uh, every time data gets added, we increment one further. So we have an idea ID on the first place, and then we increment. So we have, um, yeah, basically I, I created a script for that um, where it pushes the uh, the contract onto the chain, and we add data at some positions one forty two. 69, uh, 512, and 1024. We can check that later down the line. And every time um, we push data, we basically create an event that should be later down the line um, be picked up by the subgraph uh, that inserts it in, into its own data structure. Um, yeah, so we're gonna push that to the, to the chain for that we uh, um, create a new Terminal tab, um, CD into the contract example, and then we use this um, to basically push it to the uh, to the local chain. Uh, so let's see. Uh, looks good. We have the different hashes. This is should be the deployment, and then we have different um, the different uh, add data um functions that i call it let uh, down the line yeah looks good uh, that should also be represented in the anvil right here in the anvil tab uh, you can see contract created at this address all right <clears throat> so um, now let's set up the local graph node. The local graph node basically hosts all the subgraphs um, and automatically caches events that get listed um, by the subgraph uh, from the contracts. So uh, if, for example, that listens to the events that um, got emitted from the <clears throat> from the script. Um, it should uh, automatically uh, grab all the data and um, uh, include into the data structure of the subgraph. All right, for that, we uh, create another tab. And we move into the Docker um, subfolder. Uh, use Docker to set it up. I think in the background, it includes an, a local IPFS node um, to save all the data and uh, <clears throat> um, the the uh, uh, graph node itself. Um, yeah, in here in the Docker file, uh, uh, Docker folder, there's a setup um, script. It um, finds the the local uh, chain that we use. So, for example, the Envil chain. Um, and writes it automatically into the Docker Compose file. So we're gonna, uh, if, if we look into the Docker Compose file, we have here the whole environment that it tries to set up and the chain that we try to connect to. Um, in this case, it says here host Docker internal 8545. Um, my Linux system uh, in this case um, can't find that one. So we're going to use the script to set it up. Um, here we are already in the, in the correct folder. We're going to start a script and use sudo for that. And we should see uh, that it wrote the new address in here. So counterintuitive, as I said before, um, Normally, you would start a chain on just on the local host and connect uh, via that way. But uh, for some reason, that, that didn't function. Um, and uh, later down the line, we like, like ironically, um, when we deployed the, the contract, um, I used the local host, as you can see here, for deployment. So there's some, I don't actually know how, how it works under the hood, um, but that was one of the main points that, I mean, 
uh, a bit dumb in, in my opinion, but what are you going to do? Okay, so um, we change the, the host IP to the correct address, and now we can um, start a Docker. Sudo for that too. Okay, this will take a while um, for it to first set up the whole system and then grab all the data from the correct um, from the correct chain. Um, so we're gonna have to wait uh, later down the line. But I think I can in that time I can jump into the subgraph creation and what goes into it and um, what what you need to have in that regard. All right, so. <clears throat> um, we uh, we created the local graph node or set up the local graph node connected it to the to the local chain and the local chain contains um, the uh, correct contract with all the events that it wants to fetch so what we have to do now would be um, to create the basic subgraph or what one subgraph um, yeah. in regards of the subgraph uh, um, there, a subgraph essentially um, consists of a few files that you have to have in there. Um, the main one would be the sub subgraph YAML. Yeah, it basically is an, uh, it's a structure file um, that allows the uh, uh, graph CLI that we're going to use um, to to grab all of the essential. Um, information that it um, has to have. For example, what the GraphQL um, structure of the uh, um, of the information that we're going to use later down the line um, is, or what the address on the um, on the chain is, um, what data handlers we have, and uh, what entities in GraphQL we use. Um, so I, I created a, also a readme for that one, but I think the documentation online um, creating a subgraph itself is, um, is it's, it's pretty good documented in my opinion. Um, so uh, what would you have to do to create a subgraph from, from scratch? Um, first off, you need um, the contract ABI that you want to target. Um, in this case, it would be uh, from the contract example, I just uh, basically copied it over. Um, it's, I mean, basic ABI. Um, the next thing would be uh, that we need a GraphQL entity. A uh, GraphQL entity represents the data that, that you want to structure. I think in most cases, um, it's pretty comparably, uh, com comparable to, uh, to a struct um, in in Solidity directly, so if we have I don't know um, account data, a struct that's called account data that contains the address and like balancing of different things like that, th that would be pretty easy to to create in, in GraphQL. So for the um, example that I used, um, if you remember, um, we have an ID like we have this this mapping that contains data. Um, in this case, the data would be in integer at a uint and we have an ID that identifies it. Um, uh, so our type would be, our GraphQL type would be um, data. It's an entity. It contains an ID and some data. So that's, that's it. Um, <clears throat> what we would need after that um, would be uh, uh, to basically create a mapping file that reads one event um, from from Solidity and tra uh, transforms it into uh, um, uh, in, into the entity that you want to have on the subgraph directly. Um, in that case, we we use uh, the graph CLI to create some uh, auto generated. Um, JavaScript mappings that allows us to uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 let's go with graph code gen. So, so we included the ABI 
described. Um, we included the GraphQL uh, entity that we want to have and the subgraph YAML that um, connects all the points we want to have. Like it uh, wants to have um, a mapping TS file and um, the ABI in here and uh, later down the line, an event handler that, that we're going to include soon. Um, so uh, with with um, uh, with the uh, <clears throat> with graph code gen, we can now create um, the JavaScript um, uh, map mappings that we use in the in the background um, for easier um, implementation of the real mapping that we uh, we're gonna do soon. So let's see the CD, the subgraph, and then we do graph code gen, and it should uh, create a generated file um, that basically contains all the data from the events from the contract and also from the entity. Oh, didn't want to do that. Um, and these, these things, like the data mappings and all of that stuff, we can now use in the real data mappings file um, uh, for real reference. So um, we have the uh, um, schema that, cre that we created here, like that one. Um, that's the wrong file. So we have the, the data entity and we have the event from the contract. In this case, it's new data. And what we basically do is create an <clears throat> event handler in JavaScript that takes an event, new data in this case, and then um, handles, handles the event, basically. Um, so in handle new event, uh, new, new data, um, we basically just say, OK, we have a data object and um, we set some some parameters in that one. So data, data is data, and we save that object. Um, when we get into more complex structures from contracts, um, we can do something like change. Uh, let's let's say we have another event that's called change data. We would basically also get the event, and then we search for the um, old data object and change. Um, the things we want to change in that one. That would be also an example. All right. In, let's see if by now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Subgraph ID. So it's it's still counting. Um, let's see if we uh, when we deploy the subgraph if it already. Um, gets the data. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here. There we are. So deploy subgraph would be we basically navigate navigate into um, the subgraph. Uh, here. Um, and then we say uh, graph code gen. I mean, we already did it, but uh, it doesn't make a real difference. And then we um, first uh, register the subgraph in the local graph node. Did that. And now we're going to deploy it on the local graph node. We can enter a version. It compiles it and it deployed it. Great. So let's see. Maybe we have to wait a bit for it, but it could be that it. So here, here it registered, registers it. And now we should have it here. All right. Let's see. 
Um, so we basically deployed the, the subgraph to the, to, the, to the local node. And now we get a subgraph endpoint that we can use with a GraphQL um, interface to get the data that we want. Um, in this case, I found a website that we can use for that. Let's see, um, it's basically where you can, uh, by a, gra a GraphQL interface, where you can define what endpoint you want to use. In this case, we have the endpoint here. Copy it, and we enter it, and now we can do requests. In this case. Um, I already made an example query that we can use. It basically grabs all of the data objects, um, ID and data, and we should get the data that we put into the system at the start with the, uh, um, uh, with, the, with the contract script. So if we hit it, we're going to see 1, 42, 69, 512. 124. All right. Yeah, um, like difficulties down the line where um, the, I mean, th th that's basically it. Um, so you, uh, you, you set up the, the local chain, um, use an example, like, like the, the contract that you want to test, push it onto the, uh, um, onto the, the node, uh, onto the chain, then you create a local uh, local node, um, push the subgraph onto that, and all of those should connect um, at that point, and then you can um, start querying from, uh, from an example site, in this case, just this one. Um, I think one of the greatest difficulties was actually setting it up for for me um, because of the like it it wasn't that well documented in many cases of the setup especially the connection from the from the anvil local chain um, yeah um, maybe some as an addendum um, the 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 goal of creating the the whole subgraph local environment um, was to be be able to uh, easily test test the subgraph, right? Um, or make make testing from uh, subgraphs easier. And um, maybe some things that I recognized along the way um, was, for example, I think um, for be, like like one of the steps that are necessary to test the whole setup. Um, is that you have to have at some point um, also a, an, a script that contains an example's data structure. Uh, the, I think that's one of the points that you have to actually have in mind. If you create, create a project and you say, okay, I want to, to, to test the, like, like I want to write a subgraph for it and I want to, um, uh, query all the data from it and test test how uh, the development of it. You actually have to have data for it. So if if you have nothing online for that, like you want to do the subgraph pre-launch on the on the mainnet or something, um, you actually have to have a script for that where you uh, set up example data, like in on a like on a scale um, that is uh, fitting for the for the project you want to do. All right. Do you guys have questions? Is there a way to do this uh, without the Docker thing locally? Um, yeah, there's a way for it. Um, I, I didn't try it my, uh, out myself because you have to have like three different things in the background um, for yeah. the graph node to, to, to work, but you can definitely do it. I mean, uh, would that uh, reduce the complexity of setting up or increase it? Yeah, I would say increase it um, because you have to host an IPFS node 
and I think even uh, another database for the for the local environment because not everything is hosted on the IPFS node. Okay. So it would be like I don't know for for extra steps, including um, the installation of the environment that you that they recommend to use. Any other questions? Um, I'm not not sure if that's if it's really a question, but just um, how much do you think is is the the effort that you put in to kind of find all of this out? How much of that uh, in percent was just finding out how to set things up instead of actually setting things up? I would say eighty <laughs> percent. Okay, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah it, it was it was pretty harsh. Um, the I think the uh, uh, the actual setup now that I made the guide is still pretty extensive because you have I mean every time you want to test the setup you would basically have to um, <clears throat> create the local. Uh, local chain and then you have to push the contract then you have to create the uh, the local node um, push the subgraph onto that one you, you probably can can optimize it with with some scripts but uh, it's it's still pretty extensive also if you set up the graph node itself um, that takes like 10 minutes to till it's at a point where it uh, has all the data fetched um may, maybe not 10 minutes but it's it's a few minutes and like you make a change on the on the subgraph environment and then um wait wait five minutes for it to to fetch all the stuff i don't actually know if that's that's worth i have a feeling that you for the whole subgraph uh, development that you basically just do it with the finished contract and uh I think um, for the, um, I mean, one of the goals was also to to see how you can include subgraph development into um, the development of a of a Solidity project, and I think in like like uh, how how people would get a feel for it, how to create events and all the stuff, but in my mind, it's um, like everything that changes state has to have an event and with that everything is basically already available for the subgraph to fetch and uh, it, it, you basically have to have a full re representation of of state um, of chain and i think that that just includes that you have to uh, basically create an event for every state change and I think that's not too hard to keep in mind, at least. Yeah, makes makes sense. Is it also? Uh, I would I would assume at least then that in the events that you emit, you would also need to include everything, every data point that you would want to have in the graph, or do you also? No, no. I think you you would only need to um, include in the events what you change because like. And the stuff like um, let's let's go with the struct example. Um, you have a struct that contains an important data point, and with the creation of the of the struct, then you would have to include everything you want to have from that struct because it's it's created from scratch. But later down the line, if you just change a single point of the struct, you just have to have an event that basically says, okay, what struct are you changing? And what exactly do you change? So you don't have to copy all of that stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I kind of meant that just in, in going with your example, you can't then just have an event saying this struct has changed. That's the ID. So because then you don't know what has actually changed because you, yeah, you have to think about that you always have to emit uh, the stuff that you actually want to work with in, in the graph, which I think if yeah, if we if we keep that in mind, then the contracts should already be 
ready for a subgraph at some point. Yeah. Yeah, very good point. Pascal, did you have something? Uh, yeah, uh, when you started talking, I also just wanted to put in that uh, I think just um, emitting event just when there's a state change is not always enough because you need to later identify exactly what changed. And for that, this identification field is a lot of times missing. And um, yeah, but, otherwise but you, we would... But you can create an event for the specific thing you want to change. Um, like if, okay. you, if you have a specialized situation, you create a specialized event for it, in my mind, at least. So you're saying basically if there is an owner change, it doesn't matter that it only contains an address because we know that the event is called owner has changed. So we know what it is for. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. That was that what you what you meant, Pascal? Uh, yeah, that was basically it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That was awesome. Thank you very much. I think this is a great uh, introduction to how setting this all up because I I think as you as you said, eighty percent of your time went into finding out how this actually is set up. So if we ever want to work with something like this, now we a very great, uh, not only a great introduction, but I guess we'll also publish publish the repository so people can you know, fork it, copy it, copy bits and pieces of it so they know what they actually need to do. So yeah, we can save a bit of, of time when we actually want to use it and focus on writing the correct YAML files and bindings or whatever. Perfect. Thank you very much, Felix. And I guess that was it for this week's EVM expedition.